I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Today's Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you how we can make this dispersion effect where we take a source image and break it up into lots of little pieces. It's done with a spray can tool and some simple masking techniques. And I also wanna show you some hidden features with the sculpt tool that lets you move things around in interesting ways, almost at will. This video is sponsored by our very first sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. So thank you, SNHU. And thanks to everybody who's been commenting, watching these videos, and let's do this one. I went with a leaf for the subject of this project. I just dragged it in. This is a source image from pexels.com. I'll have the details in the description if you want this exact photo. Let's set our scale so we're all working in the same size ratio up here. You see this wrench with the paper that is document properties or you can go to file document properties. I'm on the A4 template, which is 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. And if I zoom out, I can actually cheat on the zoom. If I select this magnifying glass with the dashed box, it will scale it to whatever the selection is. And there is the A4 template. We're gonna be using a combination of clone tracing with the spray can tool. So a large image doesn't actually hurt us as badly as it normally would. If you're gonna follow along, size it roughly so you have your A4 template and the leaf is about like that. My normal go-to if I wanna extract a vector out of a photo is trace bitmap. And you can do that, but there's an even quicker way with the paint bucket tool. Click on paint bucket. By nature, paint bucket will adopt the fill and stroke color of the last thing you did. I forget what I did, so I'll choose rectangle and draw something. I don't want the stroke, so I'll hit shift and the little red X on the far left on the color ribbon, and that will eliminate the stroke. Now paint bucket will dump this color and we're going to tell it to select the saturation of this image fill by saturation threshold we'll say 45 and grow shrink let's shrink it by negative 2.0 the reason for that is i see this see this white pixelation i don't want to collect that i only want the beautiful orange leaf we've got the settings down let's do it paint bucket i'll click once somewhere on the orange and there it is made a vector shape. Put this one aside for now. Control D will duplicate it. And the spray can tool is gonna spray whatever you have selected. Right now, if I double click, I'll see the nodes. That's a lot of nodes. The more nodes you have, the more spray can needs to think. So let's go to path, simplify. Do you see how the nodes reduced by quite a bit? Try it one more time. Path, simplify, even less. This first one, I'm gonna keep pure with all the nodes because it's gonna become a mask later on. I'll hold control to keep the ratio locked in and we'll shrink this one down to be our vector object right about there. Here is how spray can tool works at the most basic level. Right down here, spray tool. You've got different modes. The first mode is spray copies of the initial selection. So I've got that little leaf selected. Don't worry about these controls right now. Hold down left mouse button and you spray it out. Or you could spray clones, which is the next mode. I still have this original leaf selected. Now when I spray it out, it looks the same, except if I change the color or the size or anything of the original, all the clones change. Now let's go one step deeper and add a tracing feature to the tool. I'll go back to the first mode, spray copies. For width, I have it one. Amount 30, that's how many copies get sprayed out when you click. It isn't actually accurate to that number. I think the more nodes the initial selection has, the harder it is to spray, but 30 is fine. Rotation 50, that'll vary how much it rotates. Scale 30, maybe 25. Scatter one, focus one. You wanna have both of these eyes selected. So if it's toggled off, make sure they're both toggled on. And here at the end, the eyedropper, pick color from the drawing, choose that, and now you see the first one, apply the picked color to the fill. First, I'll show you a quick example, then we'll do it for the actual project. Wherever I click, it's gonna create a copy of that leaf and it will be the color of whatever's underneath it. See my leaves? And to show you what we just did, I'll drag this out of the way, there are the leaves. So how do you get rid of the background part? That's easy. Duplicate our original leaf with all the nodes. Put it wherever you want. I'll make it green only out of habit because it denotes a clipping object. I can reduce the transparency to see exactly what I have selected here. Green object selected, hold shift to get the picture. Object, clip, set. All right, let's do it for real this time. Here is our red original leaf. 
Zoom to selection, and we'll add one more control to the spray tool. Mode spray copies, width one, amount 30, rotation 50, scale 25, scatter one, focus one. This time on the second eyeball, apply over transparent areas. Deselect that, and you see this group of rectangles? Click on that, that is the offset. If you want to prevent clumping, you can add the offset. 100% means it won't clump at all, which is a little too aggressive. We'll do 25%. Enter, click and hold, and you'll see your leaves come out. If you try to spray out here, nothing happens. That's what the closed eyeball designates. It's not gonna spray in a transparent area. And now you can have at it. Just spray as much as you want, experiment, maybe spray out 50. See if it comes out a little bit faster. It's come up in the comments a couple times. People ask, did I go to school for graphic design? And kind of. I went to school for architecture and design, but it was so long ago we didn't have a lot of computing power. We had AutoCAD, but you had to like log in to get computer lab time. But that's not the case now at places like Southern New Hampshire University. This video is sponsored by our very first sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University, where they have a graphic design program where I can tell you they do not limit the amount of time you can spend on your computer. They actually feature over 200 degree programs that can help you get started in a career that you're gonna love. I think YouTube's a great place to start because you can do tutorials like this to get your feet wet, but if you want a deeper dive, like with SNHU's graphic design degree, you can learn not only design, but also how to be a professional. They even have concentrations in some things that we've never done on this channel, like 3D modeling, or if you wanna be your own agency, you can get into web design on top of all this graphic design. They have programs that are extremely flexible. There's no set class times. You can work where you want, when you want. If you already have college credits, you don't have to start over. SNHU will let you transfer up to 90 credits and up to 12 if you want to go get a master's. So if you're watching these videos after work and you hate your nine to five, you can consider switching careers. Go to snhu.edu slash iron echo to learn more. Thank you, Southern New Hampshire University, for the sponsorship. And let's see what our sprayed leaves are looking like. Look at that, nice and even. If you want the dispersion to be spaced out, this is the 25% offset. If the look that you're going for is no overlap, you wanna be in 100% offset. I actually don't mind too much overlap, but I also like to cheat. So I'm gonna grab all of these and do Control D, which will duplicate them. But you say, where are they? They're buried underneath, but if I select them again, when I go to the Sculpt tool, the settings I have right here is 25 width, force 40. Go over here to this one, move objects in random directions. Watch what this does. It just, look at that, it's like the wind. If you do it too much, you can always do Control Z to bring it back. Let's try it again, there we go. Before we go too crazy with the sculpting, let me do the mask now, because I have to get rid of this half, or this third. The simplest way to explain how a mask works is whatever you have set to white, it's gonna take that. So whatever's under the white gets taken. Here's my random rectangle. Hold shift, I've got the leaf, object, mask, set mask. It only takes whatever's white. And it's non-destructive, which means if you didn't do it right, like I don't want that rectangle, I don't want that, I can go back to object, mask, release mask. There it is. What I want is a jagged portion here that reflects exactly these leaves are gonna be coming out. So I'll select these leaves right here, control D, set them all to green because we're just gonna use them temporarily as we clip things out here. I'll bring over our rectangle, cover all the stuff we wanna take, minus this profile of leaves. Gather all your leaves up, path, union. Now it's all one path because path functions only work on paths, remember that. Where do we want this? Maybe here? I definitely don't like this hard line here. If you don't wanna spray clones, you could take one of the originals, and if you hit spacebar, it will stamp it out. I'm adding more to break up that hard vertical line. Now I have to make that red line of leaves part of the original green path. If I hold shift, it lets me make a bounding box over those items. See, they're all selected there, but now I have to do path union. I have the white box, hold shift. I have the path of green, path, difference. Now my mask will only take what's white. The mask is selected, hold shift, I've got the leaf, object, mask, set mask. 
there we go. Let's put these two together and I wanna show you some more of the sculpt settings because I think it's an unsung tool. Let me zoom in, look how nicely this fits right in there. Look at that. Here's the first relevant sculpt setting that will work. I want this to get smaller. I can hold shift and control and reduce it manually, but there's a faster way. Let's select these, go to the sculpt tool for mode, the fourth one over, shrink objects, click that. I need my circle larger, make that 50. Now when I click, see that it just scales it down. If you hold shift, it will enlarge. So shift, enlarge, no shift, it will shrink. It won't work if you don't have it selected. See how I'm over this one, I'm clicking, nothing's happening. I think it's a good fail safe. The sculpt tool will only work on the stuff that's been selected. I'll make a bounding box over these, back to sculpt, shrink those a little bit. I cheated again, I brought in a backdrop. So there's more contrast than the gray desk here. Don't need the original. The amount that you explode out the leaves is all by choice. And you can control which of the leaves will actually be affected by sculpt by what you select. I've got this bunch right here. Let's duplicate that again. Go back to sculpt, random. Whoa, we don't need a 50 width. We'll change it back to 30 width. Yeah, there we go. That just moves it in random directions. You have other options. We'll go to this one, move objects towards cursor. The intensity of the effect is based on force. So force 40 is fine, it's a little bit more forgiving. If I click up here, it's like they're getting vacuumed up. What if I click right in the center? They all go into the center. Why don't we go to a huge width, 50, and we'll do the first mode, move objects in any direction. Let's see what happens if I just click and drag the whole thing. This is the leaf pile I'm taking, sculpt, any direction with a force of 40. Here we go. I like the randomness of it. Change it to 30. Let's take just this part, getting carried away. If you're going for precision, you can actually go back and take them one by one and put them wherever you envision them to be laid out best. I need to bring these back in a bit. Move towards cursor, suck these in, suck them back in. What if we do it all? Oh, this is the example from the very intro. If I hold shift, it explodes out. A very organic feel to a software program. And you wanna put a stem on that, you might as well grab your draw calligraphic brush strokes, make that black. And that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for our first sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. Thanks to everyone who watches, who comments. Let me know what you think. You wanna try this out in a different application? Let me know and see you.